Welcome back to the channel, Bears fam. My name is Dan Durkin, and this is the All-22 Review. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I hope you like what you see and you take a moment to like and subscribe. And to all my existing subscribers, I truly thank you for the support and engagement. Training camp is here. Uh, the season's right around the corner, so it's a really exciting time for football fans everywhere. Given the performance of the offensive line in 2022, Bears general manager Ryan Poles prioritized improving this group both in free agency and the draft. Uh, before he used his first-round pick on offensive tackle Darnell Wright, Poles acquired right guard Nate Davis on a three-year contract worth $30 million and $19.5 million guaranteed. Davis was drafted out of Charlotte uh, by the Tennessee Titans in the third round of the 2019 draft. At Charlotte, he lined up at right guard and right tackle, but he's played every snap, about 3,000 of them, in the NFL at right guard. Davis became a starter early in his rookie season. He'll turn 27 in September, so Poles acquired a durable starter on a shorter-term contract. So from my perspective, it's a good deal for both sides. For this particular video, I watched the Texans and Chiefs game, and I got a really good feel for who Davis is as a player. You'll see it on the film as I walk you through it, but what immediately stood out to me about Davis was his ability to bend. He's a natural knee bender who stays low out of his stance. He's got quick feet, which will definitely benefit him in the Bears' outside zone run scheme, and it helps him mirror and pass protection. And when he latches on, he has strong hands at the point of attack. He has some habits that show up on film that he needs to clean up. Every player does. There's no perfect player in the NFL. Sometimes Davis tends to lead with his head. Uh, he can get off balance when he's engaged, and he gets overpowered at times in the middle. But as a whole... He's a big addition to a group that desperately needed a talent injection. So let's get into the tape. All right, let's get into the tape here. Here's Davis at right guard. As I mentioned, that's where he takes all of his snaps. It'll be easier for me to distinguish him from the tight copy. We're looking at the wide copy right now. This uh, first sequence here is going to come from the game against the Titans. Um, you're going to see a mix of you know pass protection, run blocking, and just some commentary that I have on the top of it. This first snap is a pass pro uh, rep from Davis. I like how on this particular one, um, he takes two. So he's going to help with the right tackle. Then he's going to pick up the right guard. Um, he stones both of them and, and he really loses no ground. So let's just go ahead and let, get, let it run here. So help the right guard, excuse me, the right tackle latch on there. And then he moves on to the linebacker that's flowing down. You get a good, good view of it here. So again, Davis right here at right guard. Clear that off. Uh, you have to deal with a lot of uh, Malik Willis throughout this performance. It's it's a tough watch, but again, I'm focusing on the right guard, not the quarterback. I can see why the Titans drafted another quarterback this past fall, is all I'll say about the performance of Malik Willis. So there, secure latch immediately easily flows over there to pick up the late linebacker. Love the recognition, eyes up field. All right, another pass pro rep here. In this instance, you're going to see a mug look. So you're going to see a linebacker walked up into the A-gap. So here's the linebacker that I'm talking about. He's walked up into the A-gap. Remember, A-gap is the guard, the, the gap between the outside shoulder of the center and the guard. So this is the A-gap that he's walked up into. So he is Davis's responsibility. So a smaller, quicker guy matched up against him. But I really like um, this clip to give you an idea of what he is as a mover laterally. The ease with which he's able to stay with a faster linebacker and just mirror his movement, really impressive. Quick feet, punch, stay back. Like I understand that the, the linebackers kind of spy in here a little bit as well, but this is a great, great rep to give you an idea of just how easy of a mover Davis is. Talked about a bender, nice low bend. Mirror, mirror, gave up no ground that entire rep. R really good look there to get an idea of what he's like as a mover here. All right, so now we're going to get a chance to see him do some run blocking here. Um, we talked about at the beginning the match that he is for the outside zone scheme that the Bears want to run. I love the athletic profile that he brings to the table here. He's a really easy mover to the second level. You will see some clips of him, you know, getting not able to get all the way to the second level, but there are many more clips like this one that I'm about to show you here. Watch him flow out from this position to, to snatch the, the, the second level uh, backer, cuts him off, nice strike at the point of attack as well, and drives him out of the way. So latch drives out of the way 
finishes all the way to the snap. Love that rep. You'll see it here again. Easy flow to the second level. He's going to take on Kirksey. Drives him right out of the screen. Nice rep. Not much of a game, but again, I'm evaluating the right guard, not the Titans, uh, you know, offense, which is, which is really tough to watch at times. Another situation where the Texans are showing a, a mug look. So again, now he's on the opposite side, right guard. So he's up here. You got that linebacker mugging the A gap again right here. But again, perfect example for how easy he moves. Let this one play. Latch and drive at the point of attack. Clears a lane, creates a really defined running lane for the running back. You'll get a great appreciation for it here at the tight copy. Strike, drive, move. Looking back, so mug in the A gap, gets right on him. The running back actually read his block twice. He was originally thinking about going off his right hip, but Davis kept securing. They gave him a chance to, to cut back to the left. Nice little gain there up the middle. Another uh, second level cutoff of a linebacker. We talk about that ability to flow to the second level. Davis is a good mover. He, he, can, he can get up there. And so here he is right here. I'm bringing these out because this, these are the types of asks that the Bears have of their offensive line in this particular scheme that they run. They need these guys to be able to easily flow to the second level, match linebackers, and, and get on those blocks. So that's a lot. That's a big ask of the guard there. So he's flowing from the right side to block a linebacker pursuing to the left. So you see Davis there, 64. He's going to flow to his left. Cut off, secure. Granted, Henry got caught from behind there, but if uh, he's able to take that extra step, that could have been a, a longer gain simply because Davis did secure at that second level, that linebacker, so he would he had some green grass to run off of that. Uh, this, this is another example. Talked about low pad level, easy bender. Low man wins in, in, in many situations at the offensive line. It's a leverage battle. So he... I want you to pay attention to how low he fires out of his stance on this, and he's able to win the leverage battle against the guy lined up heads up. So we're talking about this matchup right here, head to head right here. He is the low man in this instance, and he's going to win the leverage battle. And you're going to see it right here. Let this play. Low man wins, moves enough. For Henry to be able to, you know, kind of sneak his way there, you'll get an appreciation for it here as well. Low man wins at the point of attack. Move, move, move. He creates that gap for Henry to jump back into and get up the field. All right, we're going to get an inside zone look here from, from Davis. Again, he's got a guy matched up. Head up on him, inside zone. I like the strike of his hands and then the drive on this as well. He creates a really defined running lane for Derrick Henry, who's just outstanding, who takes this one to the house. So let, let's just let this one roll. You'll see what I'm talking about, both from the wide and the tight copy. Strike, drive. Henry cuts immediately off of that gap that Davis makes. So he cuts off of his right hip. It's the drive that allows him to make that cut, and then it's just the Derrick Henry show from here. You'll see it on the tight copy. A little bit of a stalemate here, but he wins on this drive. He's going to really strain right there. That's all Derrick Henry needed. Woo, and he puts a move on that safety in the middle of the field. It's touchdown time. Davis made that play possible. Obviously, Derrick Henry took it from there, but uh, excellent block by, by Davis on this. So we just saw a little inside zone action. You're going to get a G lead. So the guard is actually going to be the lead. Davis is going to be the lead blocker on this play. He gets a great kick out on the defensive end. Just to point him out, here he is right here. Watch him lead out in front on this play. Love the athleticism, and I just love the power point of attack. Here comes that G lead. Boom. Again, Create defined running lanes for the running back. Running backs are looking for color. They're specifically looking for color to flash from the other team. They're going to run in the opposite direction. So when you can create that defined lane to say, safe to run this way, that's exactly what Davis does in that play to, to seal that defensive end off. More athleticism to the second level. So important and such, such an ask within the Bears' current blocking scheme. Something he's going to be asked to do a lot of. Does it really well here on this play. That's why I keep singling out these, how smoothly he climbs to the second level, which is really essential for success in the Bears offensive scheme. Going to get to that second level flow, cut off, drive, stays with the block all the way to the whistle. 
Really like that play. Easy flow, and then he maintains that latch the entire way. He's going to block 48, the linebacker to the left, as you're looking at the weak side backer. Guy had no chance to make that play. Davis was on it from start to finish. Pad level. Again, low man wins. We talk about this a lot. He has really good balance, core strength. You can tell he puts a lot into his conditioning. He he wins on one leg. He loses on one leg a lot. You'll see what I'm talking about, but he gets a pancake at the end of this one. He ends up in situations where he's leveraging so hard, he's typically pushing off of one leg. In this instance, he wins. I have a couple clips where he doesn't win, but he's got really good balance and core strength. So low man wins. He's able to win that head-up battle and dumps him at the end. All right, moving on to the Chiefs game. I, I really was eager to watch this one because you get some good matchups um, with Davis against Chris Jones, who's just an outstanding player. Um, this one here, run block, really good punch at the point of attack to create a gap. He does need to stay a little bit more square. Talked about that a little bit before, how he can fight from one leg. Uh, you, you'll see what I'm talking about here, but he, he definitely does enough on this one to create a defined running lane. Back goes the other way, but he had an option to go through Davis's gap on this one as well. You'll see it from the tight copy. He created a big, big alleyway right there. The running back, I think, made a, you know, maybe a little misstep there with where he chose to press the hole, but uh, Davis definitely dominated that rep. All right, here's one of those examples of him matched up against Chris Jones. So let's just get this. Here's Jones right here. Here's Davis right here. The play goes opposite. Malik carries it himself on this one, but I just want to show you, he's got some pop in his hands and he's going to show it on this particular play. He jolts Chris Jones. You'll, you'll get a much better appreciation from the tight copy, but he knocks Chris Jones off his base on the strike. And this is what I was talking about before. He has a lot of power in his hands when he leads with his hands. He just has a tendency at time to lead with his head. On this one, he leads with his hands and you'll see it right here. Knocks Chris Jones off balance on that one. That's a, that's a nice, that's a heavy push right there. Strong hands at the point of attack. This one's a great rep. So he gets a twofer on this one. So what I mean by a twofer is he's able to assist at the first level before he makes his way to the second level. He jolts Nick Bolton at the second level and creates a really defined running lane for, for uh, Derrick Henry. So he's going to help right originally to secure that. And then, I mean, he, he pops Nick Bolton back there a few yards on contact and then there's the Derrick Henry show from here on out. But again, help at the first level before securing the second level block. I like that. Help the center out here and then climb. So help the center secure. Boom. Him knock Bolton to one one foot there. So he's got a little pop in his hands when he uses it. I like that a lot. This one goes away from from Davis, but I left this in we talk about adding an element of nasty or just bringing like a different characteristic to the offensive line. They need it. And so I, I just like how he, uh, he he dumps Nick Bolton at the end of this play. So Bolton's the, the middle linebacker. He's going to shoot the A-gap here. Davis is there for him, just dumps him. All right, now we're on to a little bit of teach tape. You're going to see him whiff at the second level on 48. Granted, 48 just misses Derrick Henry, but, uh, you know, this is an example of footwork and not having his aiming points you know lined up there because he just runs past the linebacker who's able to go underneath this block and chase Derrick Henry down and almost trip him up right at the line of scrimmage just a not not great footwork by Davis right there maybe oversteps a little bit but again nobody's perfect but these are the clips that when I was going through I was like oh you know that, that that's teach tape right there for the coaches and there's no doubt they're drilling him on this one so here's another example of just not getting to the second level in time he gets a little tripped up here at at the line, somebody snags his foot, but again, not able to secure that second level block is so crucial on these because it's the linebacker here that forces the cutback. He doesn't make the tackle, but he definitely impedes the play. This is that ask of those offensive linemen. You need to be quick enough to get out there. So 58 is able to force that allows that secondary player to come up and make this play. You need your line, your lineman to be able to reach those second level blocks. This one right here is an example of where I think he gets overpowered. This is something that, that, that came up in, in uh, several reps when I saw him matched up against. This is a nose tackle across, so he's given up some weight here and some strength to get in. He definitely struggles against guys who are bigger and more powerful heads up against him. You'll see what I'm talking about here, but he gets dispatched pretty quickly here by this, this nose tackle. He loses some, some speed. He gets, oh, I'm sorry, he loses some strength battle, so he gets overpowered really easily on this play. 
the running back's able to scoot by, but you'll see here from the tight copy what I'm talking about. Just one hand moved out of the way. It's a strong man that he's going up against, but that came up a couple times in these clips. Is head up against a, a guy who's a little bit more stout, a little bit more powerful. He tends to lose those. Again, he's got a nose tackle lined up. Unable to make it to the second level. This time, Kirksey makes the play. So again, this is the third clip now we've seen from this Texas Texans game where he's unable to make it to the second level to secure that block that ends up being the difference in the play. So Kirksey just beats him to the gap on that play. You see Davis, you know, with his hand there. Just got to get out of the stands a little bit quicker. Needs to get square at the second point, at the second level, at the point of attack. But again, there are several clips where he's able to do that. He's just not consistently reaching the second level in this particular game. He ends up on the ground in this play. I remember, remember Daniel Jeremiah talking about how when he graded offensive linemen, he would count how many times they end up on the ground. So I think it's like a balance issue or his feet on this one. But again, head up. Gets overpowered a little bit and just, you know, just kind of tossed to the side. So it's not a good base and just easily got pushed down to the ground in that particular rep. Here we have another example where he has a guy lined up across from him. This is just, again, another clip of him getting overpowered at the point of attack. Nose tackles give him trouble. And, and you know, that, that's been a problem with the Bears offensive line. Sam Mustafer struggled with guys heads up across him. But you're actually going to see the nose tackle right here. Let me draw him out for you. He's going to cross face. And so what I mean by that is he's actually going to slant. He's going to slant into Davis on this. And he's going to knock him off his anchor. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I, once I let this clip go. So he's going to cross the center's face and crash right into Davis and just crumple him over. Davis's foot looks like it got trapped there a little bit by the right tackle, but uh, he, he does get overpowered. And there were, there were quite a few clips like that one right there that we just watched. So here's an example of what I talked about before him leading with his head. He leads with his head against Chris Jones, does not work well, gets knocked off his anchor and loses the gap. So we're just going to let this one run. Attack with your hands, not your head. He goes head first into this and Jones is able to shed it because he doesn't have the longest arm. So when you're getting that close to a guy who is as strong and has longer arms, he's getting his hands on Davis's pads before Davis gets his hands on Jones' pads. So just really allowed Chris Jones to win that because he led with his head and not his hands. This is the last clip. This is a, a pass block. He was pretty solid in, in, in pass pro. I know that people think of him as a run blocker, but I thought his pass blocking was pretty good. This one, he just oversets outside. So he's going to lose across his face and give up the A gap. You'll get a chance to see it here, but even better from, from the tight copy about what I'm talking about. Overset and just kind of you know talk about He's a, he's a good knee bender. He lunges over. He's going to lean over, head over toes on this. And you can see how he gets off balance. So overset, and then he's going to lose his balance as he's trying to chase the guy down. But all in all, guys, I really liked what I saw from, from, from Davis throughout these clips. I think that his athletic profile is exactly what the Bears needed. Uh, they needed to upgrade so significantly on the offensive line. And just given the dollars that the Bears doled out for this contract and the duration of it leads me to believe that they're still kind of asking him to prove it a little bit. So I think it's a safe deal for both sides of it. But now when you think about where the Bears were last year to go from that to Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Cody White here, Nate Davis, and Darnell Wright, that's a significantly improved group. So I'm Dan Durkin. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, if you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Please go back and watch some of my older videos. Uh, like and subscribe. It definitely helps me out. Um, talk to you guys soon. Have a lot more coming. Take care, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, it's shameless self-promotion time. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help me out. And if you want to, you can also follow me on Twitter at DJ Durkin. I provide in-game, real-time analysis for all Bears games throughout the season. Please stay healthy and well. We'll see you guys soon.